Have you ever seen two boxers go head to head and the outcome is so decisive that it makes you rethink everything you thought you knew about both fighters? Lacrosse, like every other sport, is driven by narratives. And this recent individual matchup between Yale attackman Matt Brandau and Albany defenseman Jake Pacino was a narrative buster. Coming into this matchup, Jake Pacino hype was through the roof. This guy was landing over the head checks against elite players, scoring goals every week, playing man up as a long pole, basically living every defender's dream at Albany. Earlier in the season, Virginia head coach Lars Tiffany, who also coached Pacino at the World Games with the Haudenosaunee Nationals last summer, said the 5'8", 180-pound long stick defender might be the best player in the country. Boy, Jake Pacino could be the best player in the country. That quote helped sell this story, and that story probably played a role in ESPN analyst Paul Carcaterra ranking Jake Pacino as the number eight overall prospect on his first 2024 PLL draft big board on March 22nd. That, my friends, is how a narrative is born. Matt Brandau, by comparison, didn't even make Kark's big board. Sure, he entered the matchup against Albany with 86 points, but the story about Brandau is that he's too old, a COVID leftover racking up points against crummy competition. I mean, this guy graduated high school the same year as Trevor Lawrence and RJ Barrett. How is he still in college? All that's fair criticism, but at the end of the day, Brandau is just playing out his eligibility and will probably still be a pretty good PLL player despite being a year or two older than many of the other prospects in this class. Against Albany on April 19th, we got to see Brandau go one-on-one -on -one against a top PLL prospect in Jake Pacino. The Great Danes jumped out to a hot start in this game, so the two didn't truly match up until midway through the first quarter. Pacino was playing pretty tight defense on Brandau early on. He was cutting off back cuts, picking up ground balls, and even teasing some flashy checks. But it was at the 108 mark in the first when Brandau first flashed his ability to own this matchup. He meets Pacino at the righty wing, steers him right into a pick, then rolls underneath and finishes with a leaner so greasy that it had the goalie guessing low. 90 seconds into the second quarter, Brandau beats Pacino from the lefty win. Again, Brandau drives him right into a pick before going underneath, and this time he finishes with an even nastier leaner. On both of these plays, Brandau was able to create a ridiculous amount of separation. Pacino was a little too aggressive and unaware of Yale's picks, and Brandau was just too quick to be caught with a trail check. After giving up these goals, Albany switched up its defense and tried covering Brandau with a short stick. That wasn't a good idea, as you see Brandau effortlessly beat his man topside and scored his easiest goal of the game yet. This one is obviously not Pacino's fault, unless it was his brilliant idea to cover Brandau with a shorty. After recording a first half hat trick, Brandau became more of a feeder in the second half and had five assists. On this first one, Pacino learned that you can't give Brandau this much space. Before he even catches the ball, Brando knows exactly where he's going with the next pass, and he puts it right on his teammate's stick, who is able to finish it on the crease. On the next assist, Pacino was closer to Brando, but not quite on his hands when he made this feed from GLE. Brando deserves credit for making another quick and accurate pass, but this is more Albany's defense letting Pacino down off ball than it is him getting beat. Skip ahead to the fourth quarter, where Brando had three of his assists and the first one is a little strange. The ball goes out of bounds, and instead of meeting Brandau for the restart on the end line, Pacino retreats to the center of the defense. Right here, you see him point for someone else to fill in down low. Brandau recognizes the confusion and sprints to X, where he makes another quick decision and a perfect pass to the crease for an easy goal. On the next possession, it becomes clear that Albany was trying to set up a zone defense with Pacino at the point. But in this defense, they don't put any pressure on Brandau at X, and he easily picks them apart in a matter of milliseconds. Brandau's eighth and final point of the game came on a man-up assist with one minute left. You can't pin that one on Pacino either, and you have to give him some credit for the plays he did make throughout the game. Pacino didn't get credit for the cause turnover on this play, but he's physical with Brandau and is all over the pass attempt, which doesn't get through to the intended target. On this play, Pacino actually lands a trail check, but Brandau gets lucky and the ball sails safely into the stick of a teammate he wasn't even aiming for. Later in the game, Brandau tried a back cut against Pacino, but Pacino played it nicely, picking off the pass and spinning around Brandau before escaping upfield and completing the clear. 
Pacino also wasn't locked into this matchup with Brandau. He chips in all over Albany's defense. On this play, he leaves his matchup with Brandau to disrupt a pass on the crease, then out hustles everyone to the ground ball. Lastly, in the PLL, it's important to remember Pacino projects more as a long stick midfielder than as a close defenseman. He'll be making plays in the middle of the field and pushing transition more often than he's asked to shut down the opposing team's number one attackman. After watching this matchup, you should come away with a couple of takeaways. Number one, Pacino is still a top PLL prospect, but he's clearly not the best player in the country. And number two, Brandau isn't just dominating less experienced opponents, he can produce against other PLL prospects and should be evaluated as such. Paul Carcaterra clearly came to the same conclusions because when he dropped his PLL draft big board 2.0 on April 25th, he had Brandau ranked number nine, one spot above Pacino. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments section what matchups you'd like us to highlight next.